So I'm a co-founder and CEO of Oviva. And with Oviva, we help patients with diabetes and type, type 2 diabetes and obesity uh, live healthier and happier lives. I don't think the clicker works. Ah, excellent. Uh, so obesity and type 2 diabetes is, is pandemic. In Europe alone, 60 million patients are affected by it, and 200 billion is the annual cost to our health system. So that's medications, doctor visits, hospital visits, um, so the direct healthcare costs um, from these diseases. And there are quite a few solutions in this space already that help these patients manage these diseases. For instance, there's pharmaceuticals who are essential to the treatment of them, but typically manage the symptoms more than the actual drivers of the disease. So it's less about behavior change and, and, and the lifestyle of the patients that are being affected, but more managing the blood sugar levels of those patients. There's also other effective interventions, for instance, bariatric surgery, where when the patients get a large part of their stomach removed, they actually lose a lot of weight. They do change their behaviors because they have to, but it's actually very costly and also very risky to those patients. And what we do with Oviva is we take a, a well-established approach in the healthcare system. We take dietetic care where healthcare professionals support patients and coach them in changing their behavior and lifestyle, and we digitize that. We make that available on the patient's phone. And with that, we make it much more scalable so we can reach many, many more patients than you could in a face-to-face -face setting. We make it more effective so we get better outcomes, and we increase access most significantly so many more patients actually go to this therapy where they wouldn't go in a face-to-face -face setting. How does that work for the patient? So typically, the patient is initially diagnosed by their doctor. Um, so for instance, it's a, a new type, di type 2 diabetes diagnosis. And as part of their therap therapy, they're also prescribed to work with us um, by their doctor. We then receive that referral from the doctor. We check whether their health insurance will pay. So it's typically fully reimbursed for the patient, and there's no cost involved for them. And then the patient is onboarded onto our app. Um, they can, in that app, log everything about their lifestyle, their disease. Um, uh, they can connect a step counter, a weight scale, different devices. Um, and then after a, a data collection phase, they actually engage with a, with a human healthcare professional who supports them over a period of time to change their lifestyle and behaviors remotely via our app. And uh, that works quite well. So if you compare what we do versus face-to-face -face therapy, we, we now have about uh, two dozen peer-reviewed publications um, where, first off, you see this great ac access increase. So uh, in a study of that includes about 20,000 patients, um, uh, the, 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 the completion rates of end-to-end of -end are compared. So uh, in the face-to-face -face therapy, about 15% of the patients that were sent to face-to-face to -face only completed that therapy. And in our case, it was 75%. So it's a fourfold increase in terms of the patients accessing this, this therapy. Then on top of that, the, the scalability is much increased. So per healthcare professional that we have supporting our patients, we can treat many, many more um, simply because the technology leverages up those healthcare professionals. We get better outcomes, so greater weight loss, for instance, better HbA1c control, and we also have excellent feedback from our patients. Uh, that's led to that we could uh, scale the company already quite significantly. So we've reached about uh, 230,000 patients so far. Uh, we're in Switzerland, Germany, France, the UK, um, and reimbursed in all of those, those markets. Uh, we're growing about 100% year on year um, and have about 500 employees now um, across those markets. Um, and as we grow, there's greater and greater barriers that, that um, protect our market that we are, that we are building uh, around it. So, uh, the, first, the first and probably most important one is around the product itself. So as we have more patients, we learn more and more what is effective for what patient at what time as an intervention, so what we should help them change in their lifestyle and behavior and how we should help them to change that. And we can automate that and so to, to increase the scalability of that or decrease our costs in delivering it. Um, and that's a continuous flywheel that, that continues to accelerate the strength of our business. And then on top of that, there are significant barriers that are increasing. So for instance, the clinical evidence base, um, we now have evidence from, from two dozen um, peer-reviewed studies that really help us establish more and more partnerships in the healthcare system. Those partnerships are very, very sticky. Um, they're very hard to, to convince. It's a long sales cycle as well to, to, to bring those on board. 
Um, the reimbursement that we've achieved is also something that's relatively complex to achieve, especially across different markets. In addition to that, there's more and more regulatory hurdles. So for instance, the change from MDD to MDR regulation just means a lot more requirements every company has to fulfill to play in, play in this space and to be qualified. And uh, we're very excited about Europe as the opportunity for us. Um, if you look towards the US, uh, it's actually a similar size market. So this is the direct healthcare costs of type 2 diabetes and obesity. It's about a 250 billion market in the US. Europe overall, across many countries, obviously, is about a 200 billion market. But uh, it's still a similar size. And if you look at the investments, the venture capital investments in this space, it's been about 4 billion that went into the US. And that has certainly already generated returns um, of a couple, one decacorn and, and three unicorns. So there's, there's significant scale that's already been reached in the US, and I think we in Europe are the clear leading player. We've raised about two-thirds of that total invested money in Europe and uh, want to scale and make the most of that opportunity. Uh, we've built a fantastic team around this. So there's healthcare professionals, there are uh, data science professionals, technology, product specialists, um, people who really know how to work with the health system. So for instance, from a pharma background, and uh, we're penetrating these markets better and better and better. And um, for us, what's next is that we first and foremost want to continue to improve our outcomes for our patients. We want to broaden the way we care for them. So we want to include more mental and health and, and physical health aspects into the care for our patients beyond the more nutrition focus that we've had so far because we believe that technology can, um, has the opportunity of really integrating that care for the one point for the patient and to deliver something that's even more unique that, that traditional face-to-face -face healthcare finds it hard to deliver. Um, and then the next thing is that we want to become more long-term, so more chronic disease management versus an intervention as we are now. So typically the system thinks of us as a six-month, 12-month program that supports the patients. We now want to become a long-term support for the patient, and we want to continue to expand our European footprint. Thank you.